Hey everybody, Jared Miller here, alongside Jimmy Sirfoss and Oliver Hayes from Scobuff Sports. Here to preview the number two Washington State Cougars versus the number three Colorado Buffaloes tonight, 8.30 Mountain Time, at the T-Mobile Arena right behind us across the street. Let's get into it. Let's talk about Washington State and their win over Stanford last night. What did you see from them? I mean, Washington State, they played really well in the second half. Uh, that's when they you know, ex- extended their lead and really pulled away from Stanford. Um, Stanford had, was kind of running some momentum uh, from their first win against Cal in the tournament because it was, I don't know, pretty unlikely. It was a big comeback. Um, and it looked like Stanford was, was going to give them a run for their money, but Washington State ultimately proved that, that they were you know, kind of too much to handle, and it really looked like they were building um, some confidence and then riding that in the second half. I felt like you could see that mostly with Miles Rice, the Pac-12 freshman of the year, and you could just see the way that, I don't know, when certain guys would get on him, he really wanted to make a play and get the crowd on their feet. It looked like he was, I don't know, him him in specifics, uh, you know, he looked extra ready to, to make a move. But as a team, uh, you know, Washington State seemed to play really well and a lot of energy. And, you know, I think it will be a, a really high high energy matchup tonight. So, I actually did not get to catch a bunch of that Washington State game. But I do know that this is a Washington State team that's been pretty dang good, especially in that second half of the season. Colorado caught them early on in the season. If you look at that, they were kind of teetering around 500. Um, and Colorado's kind of shorthanded, but I think it's fair to say that this is a very different matchup than it was back then. Actually, Washington State got Colorado uh, the second time they played them in Pullman. But I think this is the best we've seen these two teams play, and I think we got a really, really fun matchup in store for the Buffs tonight. Uh, you brought up Bryce, Pac-12 freshman of the year. What does the Colorado freshman Cody Williams have to do tonight? Um, obviously, he played last night. looked pretty looked pretty good. But does he have to take it to an, another level level to keep up with the Cougars? I mean, I really think the biggest thing is an L point that Jimmy brought up is just being another body. Um, you know, he's he hasn't played last four games due to injury, and so there would be a little bit of you know a little bit of rust, a little bit of you know potential fatigue, not having played and being able to run and and be in the swing of things. But you know, also like like Jimmy said, you know, these guys were. We're beat up, Hadley getting beat up, Simpson with, with ice on, you know, and, and I'm assuming Washington State is in a similar condition. And so, uh, you know, as long as I think, you know, whether he starts or comes off the bench, as long as he can provide more depth and, you know, K.J. Simpson still played 39 minutes last night. You know, I don't think that's really going to change. But, you know, I feel like at halftime you could see Eddie Lampkin, you know, betting over even though, you know, catching his breath even though he had a great game. So I think the biggest thing for him will just be able to kind of relieve the um, the other buffs of, of their duties and uh, just be able to play his great – be able to play great defense with his athletic lanky frame because you know he can contribute offensively um but he didn't get too too much tonight or last night and uh it didn't really seem to make too much of a difference so yeah um cody williams is a very good defensive asset to this team even when he's not playing offense uh, as well as he can we've seen that uh, throughout the year and I think that kind of showed yesterday he didn't have the best offensive performance but you know in a team that's been flowing that well offensively it's not incredibly surprising to see a guy who's missed four games come in and not put on the best show you know when you got guys like Simpson and De Silva, and especially the performance Lampkin did last night kind of take it over so I think he'll get worked in a little bit more um, but if he can be a good defensive body out there and that's what won Colorado the game yesterday their defense so uh, if he can contribute in that way, they'll be all right. All right. Yesterday, Jimmy, you talked about Tristan De Silva. He has to be consistent. You know what you're going to get from KJ. You know what you're going to get from from a bunch of the other players on the team. But Tristan De Silva is the, the wild card, how consistent he is. What did you see from him last night, and do you think he needs to improve upon that today, or or you think a similar thing and, and the Buffs are doing all right? I think he did real well last night. I think he did the – he was the Tristan De Silva they needed him to be. I think he had, what, 14? Uh, and four or five rebounds, you know, uh, in a good defensive er- effort too. So, uh, especially from three, uh, Colorado is missing that three-point threat sometimes, especially against a team like Utah who can really turn it up from there. So you got to be able to match that. Um, it was weirdly enough because Hadley, you know, I was talking about how consistent Hadley had been, and Hadley kind of disappeared last night offensively. I don't know if he injured his wrist at all or anything or his finger – Maybe on his hand, we saw him shaking it off, but he attributed it to just being an off night in the press conference, so I guess that's all we can take from it. But I like what Tristan was doing last night. 
Yeah, I can agree with that. I thought Tristan played well. Um, I really think the biggest thing for him is just keeping his confidence and his aggression. He's a he seems he's a very you know when you talk to him he's a smart guy and uh, you can see it on the court and but sometimes you can feel that backfires as he wants to get guys involved in in the offense and as a talent as a talented of a scorer as he is the Buffs really need him to yeah just continue um, you know with that confidence because there were times yesterday where where he had made a good move and got an open shot and it just I don't know put it up and it just didn't go down. And so there's an, he he just needs to make sure that he he doesn't you know become discouraged from any of those missed shots and and just sticks with it. But as far as Hadley, I think that was an interesting point that you brought up just because against Washington State that was the game after um that was a game after Washington I think because I'm pretty sure he played that game and was held to just two like two points after having his career high against Washington. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how Washington State plays him in this game. Um, you know obviously. A lot of people don't necessarily look towards Hadley for his offensive production. You usually think of his defensive prowess, especially with the guys that you brought up in, in Simpson, De Silva, and you know Lampkin and Williams. I mean, just the list goes on. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be exciting and, and very interesting to see how Hadley performs, um, especially because when he when he's playing well, uh, that usually means the Buffs are are playing well as a whole. All right, so back to back days with the games. Buffs still a little shorthanded. They don't have too much action off the bench. Is there any worry about fatigue from either of you guys? A little bit. I mean, it is March, and these guys looked exhausted in the press conference yesterday. That's just my eye test. But so is everyone else. KJ brought that up at the same time uh, last night in the press conference. Everyone's got bumps and bruises. Everyone's tired. It's just going to be who's going to want it more. And this is a very mentally tough team, especially with the veteran squad that they got leading the pack. They're not going to let these guys slack off. And you're getting good minutes from your bench when they come in. Granted, you still got guys like KJ playing 40 minutes, you know, to sell up clocked in over 30 minutes that game a lot of the starting five put in heavy heavy minutes so i think it's just going to be a mental toughness game and i think that's a that's a bet i'd put colorado on yeah i think it'll be i think it'll be very interesting um just because i feel like as a as a team um colorado is very well uh i don't know trained for this they've been playing shorthanded this whole year um and a lot of guys have had to play a lot of minutes but the the main person I'm really worried about is Eddie Lampkin. Um, as we've seen, there's not a lot, there's not a whole lot of depth at the big man position. Um, so you know, we we talked about the freshman Cody Williams earlier. But I think it'll be exciting to see what Bangai Dak and Asanji Zope do because you know we saw what Dak brought yesterday in his few minutes with a, um, you know, he had a huge volleyball spike even though it was whistled a foul. You know, whether that was a foul or not, we'll have to, you know, we'd have to see. But you know, a, a big alley oop dunk. Um, so I think that would really be the the biggest thing is just what what more can these bench guys provide? Because um, you know even going away from the big man position, uh, you see Javon Ruffin who stepped in and hit hit a big three yesterday, and he's hit some big threes down the stretch recently. And uh, yeah, I think it would just be the I don't know just those small bursts that allow uh, yeah the Colorado starters and the big heavy hitters to just that little bit of rest, um, especially against this very talented Washington State team that um, you know has some depth as well. You bring up Bang Got Dak. Every time you get Dak in a game, you're going to get two things, a block and a dunk. And it's going to be an exciting pair. So I think it's like consistent. It's been every single time he's gotten into these games lately, it seems you're going to get a block and a dunk. I love to see it. It brings a great energy. All right. We are in Vegas after all. Right before we start, I checked the odds for the tonight's game. Colorado is favored heading into the game, minus 145. Are you guys... Do you guys think that's that's pretty accurate? You think you think Colorado has the advantage, or what are you expecting from the night? You know they are the three seed, playing the two seed, but I think I think Colorado definitely has an edge. I I think that's a good bet. I think Colorado can take it. It's not going to be easy though. This is a very good Washington State team, aren't they ranked right now? Is that yeah? I think yeah, like what twenty eighteen nineteen? Yeah, this is a very good team They're playing very good basketball right now. Um, I think Colorado has played better opponents so far, but um, this is going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, no, I think it will be, it will be, the odds, I think they're so messed up just because of the weirdness that we saw in the season series, because, you know, in that first game, like Jimmy said, the Buffs caught him early, uh, but the Buffs were shorthanded. That was a game where KJ Simpson had to go for a career high 34 points, basically willing the Buffs to a win in that game. I mean, just a phenomenal performance. Um, and, and I remember some big shots from Javon Hadley as well. Um, so I think that's part of the reason, you know, why the odds are, are a little different. But, you know, as Jimmy said, this Colorado team is, is a good one. 
Um, you know, and that's not to take away from this Washington State team, but Colorado is on the seven-game win streak. Uh, this is, you know, one of the health, like, even though they have Julian Hammond out, this is one of the healthiest they've been all year. Um, so, you know, I think I think that line makes sense. Although, yeah, like Jimmy said, you know, Washington State, they've played well, and even though they've they've been played close by some worse teams, um, you know, uh, I think they, yeah, it'll be a hard battle because in that first game in Boulder, um, you know, the freshman Miles Rice, as well as the other guards like Jalen Wells, um, you know, they didn't really come to play. But in that second game um, where they beat Colorado, they had big performances. They had big showings. And so as long as, as Colorado can kind of maintain that guard play, uh, you know, I think I think they'll be okay. All right. Well, the last thing before we wrap up, what do the Buffs need to do to, to stampede themselves into the finals tomorrow? Good defense, big time round uh, rebounding. It's what won them the game yesterday. Uh, Washington State's got some big-time guys who can knock down some big-time shots. They're probably going to have to guard that three-point line, make the adjustments that they did yesterday against Utah. Colorado, I like what I'm seeing with the adjustments. Um, they've been effective, and they've been effective this entire win streak. When they're, Colorado hasn't been in trouble a lot, but they've been making the adjustments that they need to attack the places where they're getting beat the most. So as long as they can make adjustments, play tight defense... I think they got this one. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, as we keep mentioning, defense is what's going to win this game. That's been the common theme of this year as the Buffs offense has pretty much been, you know, a consistent flowing machine the whole year. Um, you know, and I brought up the guards as, as far as Miles, well, Miles um, Rice and I, <clears throat> Isaiah Wells. or Yeah, I think so. My bad. I may, I may be getting the guards confused. There's, a, there's quite a few talented dudes on that team. Um, but then even further, you look at Andres Yakimovsky. Who has hit some big threes in both of the Colorado ga- in both the t- games that they played Colorado? So you know Colorado need to do a good job on running him off the line, especially after seeing you know Utah get hot early in that first half and, and the run they were able to build off of that. And then even further, I don't even think we've talked about the most talented player on that team, Isaac Jones, who's just a freak of nature. He's tall, athletic, he's lanky, and most importantly, he's really big and he likes to move around. So he's going to be a, a, a he's kind of an odd matchup. Um, with his, with his mobility and his athleticism for his size. Uh, but, you know, as much as we talked about how much we want Hadley to, to you know, step up on the offensive end, I think he'll have his work cut out on the defensive end, um, you know, banging around with, with Jones down there. And I'm sure we'll see we'll see De Silva down there. I'm sure Williams may even get in the mix. And, you know, just whoever, uh, just to slow down Jones because he can really hurt you, especially if he gets down into the interior and he can really punish the rim. So, you know, a lot of options for Washington State, but if, uh, if the Buffs can play good defense um, and, you know, yeah, really work on those adjustments, as we've seen, and as Coach Boy has, has uh, highlighted in the press conferences as of late, uh, yeah, they'll be in pretty good shape. All right, that's all we got. Number two, Washington State Cougars versus number three, Colorado Buffaloes, tonight, 8.30 Mountain Time from Vegas. For Jimmy Sear, Foss, and Oliver Hayes, my name's Jared Miller, and you heard it here first.